Hello! In this video we talk about conditioning and independence for discrete random variables. Remember that the formula for conditional probability is probability of A given B is equal to probability of A and B divided by probability of B. So we can have the same kind of problem for random variables. In particular, if you are interested in the probability that the random variable X belongs to the set C given that the random variable Y belongs to the set D, you can use uh, the same formula, probability of x, this is equal to the probability that x uh, belongs to the set C and y belongs to D divided by the probability that the random variable y belongs to the set D. So anything that we have seen for random variables, we can have a conditional version of that. So we have seen probability mass function, uh, we have seen CDF, we have seen expectation, variance and things like that. So we can have conditional PMF can have conditional CDF and so on. So in particular, again, if I have a discrete random variable X, uh, we remember that the PMF of random variable X, PX of XI, is defined as the probability that the random variable X is equal to uh, XI, right? That's the uh, definition of PMF. So we can have conditional PMF. Basically, if we know some event A has occurred, we can talk about probability that X is equal to xi given that the event a has happened and this is the notation that we use for it so in other words the conditional uh, pmf of x given a at point xi is equal to probability that x is equal to xi given that the event a has occurred and to find this we just use the formula for conditional probability this is equal to probability that x is equal to xi and a divided by probability of a similarly we can have conditional cdf so conditional cdf Remember, the CDF is defined as fx of x, and if I have, uh, if I know that some event A has occurred, I just, you know, replace this. I say this is the probability that x is less than equal to x, given that the event A has occurred, and I just write it like this. So, conditional CDF of x given A is just probability that x is less than or equal to x, given that the event A has occurred. So, this event A could be in terms of another random variable y. You know, here. Or here so for example I can talk about conditional PMF of X given Y so PXY of this, this is the notation that we use for it but you know it's the definition is um, very intuitive so this is the probability that the random variable X is equal to XI given that I know the random variable I know that the random variable Y is equal to YJ right so that we, we write this this probability using this notation so now this is a conditional probability and uh, again you can use the formula for conditional probability. This is equal to probability that x is equal to xi and y equals yj divided by probability that y equals yj. And by definition this thing is just a, a joint PMF pxy of xi and yj divided by, and this is uh, PMF of Y at point YJ, PY of YJ. Similarly, you can write PY given X of YJ given XI. This is, again, probability PXY of XI, YJ, this time divided by PX of XI. So let me summarize them. So this uh, box summarizes what we saw. Uh, again, it's just a simple notation for conditional PMF of uh, a random variable given the value of another random variable. And finally, two random variables are independent if the conditional PMF is the same as their uh, marginal PMF. So in other words, if I know PXY, PX given Y of XI YJ is equal to PX of XI for all xi's and yj's then uh, i conclude that these two random variables are independent using this formula we know that this is equal to pxy of xi and yj divided by py of yj so two random variables are independent if these two are equal which means that pxy of xi and yj is equal to pxi px of xi times py of yj's for all i's and j's. So this is another way of writing the independence of two random variables x and y. To summarize, we say that two random variables 
are independent if their joint PMF is the multiplications of their PMF as equivalently you can say that two random variables are independent if their joint CDF is the multiplication of their um, you know marginal CDFs uh, note that we have to check this for all X and Y's okay so let's uh, look at the problem to uh, practice these concepts um, this is kind of a mechanical problem to just practice all of this and then in the later videos we'll look at more kind of a practical examples so here I have uh, two random variables two discrete random variables X and Y and the possible values of X and Y are given in this figure in this figure there are 10 points uh, which represent the possible values of X and Y's uh, there are uh, red silk circles and blue circles uh, and we have so in the problem it, it is stated that probability of the blue points uh, are 3 over 20 so these five points have probability 3 over 20 and the remaining points these, these other five points have probability 1 over 20 okay so we know the joint PMM, PMF of X and Y and uh, we want to know the answers to these questions we want to find the marginal PMFs of X and Y we want to know px given y of 2 and 1 and we want to find fx given y of 1.5 given 1 so what does this mean this means that i am interested in the probability that x less than or equal to 1.5 again this is just a cdf but it's a conditional cdf given that i know that the random variable y is equal to 1 so that's what i mean by this notation fx given y of 1.5 given 1 and then the last question is are x and y independent so i suggest that you solve this problem before watching the rest of the video okay let's look at the solution so in this graph these points have probability 3 over 20 so let me just do it again and the rest of the points have probability 1 over 20. okay so first we need to find uh, p x of x i and basically py of yj's pmfs of x and y so the first step is uh, we notice that the range of x and y uh, are 0 1 2 3 and both of them are equal so if you notice x could be there 0 1 2 3 and y the same thing could be 0 1 2 3 so these are the ranges um, so to find px of 0 we just add the probabilities of the points uh, that correspond to x equals to 0 so x equals 0 is just this four points here so it's three of them have probability 3 over 20 and one of them has probability 1 over 20 so this is 10 over 20 and similarly x equals 1 is a probability of uh, the summation of these three points which again two of them have probability 3 over 20 and one of them has probability 1 over 20 which is 7 over 20 and px of 2 just two points uh, with probability uh, 1 over 20 both of them so just 2 over 20 px of 3 is just 1 over 20 and to check our answer we just uh, note that if we add them 1 plus 3 plus 7 10 so th there's sum to 1 okay now the same thing for y we can repeat the same thing for y py of 0 uh, you know y equals 0 correspond to this four points here uh, two of them have probability 3 over 20 and one of the sorry two of them have probability 1 over 20 this becomes 8 over 20 and py of 1 uh, corresponds to these three points 2 times 3 over 20 plus 1 over so it becomes uh, 7 over 20 and py of 2 becomes 3 plus 1 over 20 4 over 20 and py of 1 becomes 1 over 20 again we add them and we get uh, 1 so these are the values sorry this is py of 3 not py of 1 the second part of the question 
is asking what is the probability that basically x is equal to 2 given that y is equal to 1. We know that this is pxy of 2 and 1 divided by py of 1, which is 2 and 1 is this point here. So the probability of that is just 1 over 20, and py of 1 we found it to be 7 over 20. So that probability is just 1 over 7. Part C is the probability we are interested in, probability that x is less than or equal to 1.5, given that uh, y is equal to 1, right? So this is basically probability that x is either, you know, because x is either 0, 1, 2, and 3, so this probability of that x is equal to 0, or x is equal to 1, given that y equals 1, which is probability that x is equal to 0, given y equals 1, plus probability that x is equal to 1, given that y equals 1, which is equal to pxy of 0 and 1, divided by py of 1, plus pxy of 1 and 1, divided by py of 1. So, this is 3 over 20, plus 3 over 20, and then py of 1, we found it to be 7 over 20. So this probability is just 6 over 7. And finally, the question is that uh, are x and y independent? They are not. Um, you know, to, to, to be independent, you must have pxy of x and y equal to px of x, py of y, for all values of x and y. This is true. Uh, it's easy to see that this is not true. For example, just check, let's put 0 and 0 here. Uh, is this true that this is equal to this? But note that this is 3 over 20, px of 0. Uh, what, what was that? It was 10 over 20. That's what we found. So it's 10 over 20. And py of 0, uh, if I remember, it was 8 over 20. So, yeah. So, these, these two are not equal, so they are not independent. So, in the next video, we will continue this discussion and provide more interesting examples. Uh, talk about conditional expectation and things like that. Thanks.